Yeah, quite drastically. Heavy favorites, 75% to 25%, but as we take a look at our first attacks, man, I am so excited for this matchup now. Let's find out indeed, because MTFY are starting off this match, and they're starting things off with, oh, the Root Riders, but this time around, it's only one overgrowth spell, okay? Oh. It is only one overgrowth spell, so hopefully that is maybe taking a little bit of the risk away, which we have seen earlier. As well, I feel like so far, out of all of the teams, they were the most consistent with this strategy, being able to set up the pathing for their, for their troops was just unmatched so far. Not only were they consistent with this attack strategy, Ming used this attack strategy in his first two attacks. Three stars on both of them with very fast times. It's one minute, 33 seconds, one minute, 47 seconds against Synchronic. So it seems like Ming knows how to use this Root Rider strategy, and it is a little bit less risky with that second overgrowth not in there. However, look how far he has to travel on this base. The Roots have to get all the way to the Town Hall, which does have an invisibility tower, which could play key. Yeah, this invisibility tower is going to be an important factor. How is he going to work around it? And when is he going to deploy that overgrowth spell? He is doing that right now, and he is catching the spare tower inside the radius as well, which means he can reach that monolith, which is about to be taken care of. Beautiful but freeze. this means the spare tower can be still used later on for the town hall. But it's if all the bu buildings are out except for that one cannon, there's not going to be a ton of damage in there. And it looks like almost everything is in out. The queen is going to go ahead and work in there, take out the scatter shot. Royal Champion goes ahead and deploys her ability. The multi arch tower is down. The uh, Overgrowth fades, it's a rage there, and this is going to be a convincing three-star. Ming is going to get the job done. It is a three-star for MTFY with the Town Hall, the last building to fall. And you really can see the way on how their are in the other bases and taking advantage of that. And I think one thing we need to keep an eye on is that I might need to go fast as well, but we saw Tribe flying yesterday as well. And I feel like this is... Tribe Gaming's first attack of match number two on Championship Sunday's Kronos is coming in with roots of his own into. We are going back to the ground and pound. This reminds me of the meta throughout the whole year. This was a favorite attack strategy of almost every clan throughout every qualifier. And this is just crazy. We have seen a lot of people saying, hey, I'm struggling right now with this army composition. And those players, those pros are making it work on the big stage in the hard mode, which means the equipment are on a lower level, the defense deal more damage, the heroes are weaker in general. So take notes right now, because he is setting up the pathing with the queen on one side, the roots in the middle, and then we have the siege barracks on the far left side to work and funnel those key troops into the middle. Remember that siege barracks got an additional P.E.K.K.A. added to it. So now it's two P.E.K.K.A.s and a bunch of wizards to come out of there. So it is an amazing unit for funneling. You pair that in front of the Royal Champion and you can get so much value. We now see the Magic Mirror with the Queen. We have three Queens on the bottom of this base. In the middle, we got tons of Root Riders along with the King dealing so much damage. There are Valkyries in there spinning as well. We'll keep an eye when this overgrowth does wear off as it should be wearing off very soon. Where is the position of these troops? Are they going to be out of place? Will he be able to circle back? That's a big thing here is getting the timing right. Ooh, the earthquake booths were activated, but most of the core troops have went down. There is no more Royal Champ ability, and he has to go back towards the town hall. This is where some of the other attacks were falling short. This is where the problems are starting, and he has to make it through a couple of compartments to actually reach that town hall, depending on how the Queen is going to walk through the base. But a couple of freezes here, Itsu, so he could still freeze the town hall, freeze some of this damage. He has a couple packets here. It is a little bit sketchy. Don't get me wrong, but I think with the spell Ooh. management, Oh, he misses the Town Hall! This could play a factor. That Queen may get in range. She stays out of range. Pekkas are now in range. The Pekkas will shred this wall. This is the key moment. When do you deploy the Freeze? He can get that Builder Hut. He can get the Town Hall. Queen should have enough, and this should be a three-star for Kronos, but also it is a close one. Wow. Both teams are starting off with the same strategy, but I have to say, one of those two teams convinced me more with their first attack. We have seen an incredible close attack from Tribe Gaming. It is a three-star nonetheless, but the moment. But ultimately, I feel that we see these teams trying to play that speed race, and then they end up making that mistakes with going so fast, with doing your first good attacks. And this is what so far MTFY. This was the one strategy synchronic in their match versus MTFY were heavily concentrating on. Ooh. So this is something we have to take a look at. 
Well, he changes it up. He changes it up. What is going on? Maybe he is catching the base builders of Drive Gaming off guard. Going in with the strategy which Synchronic has used so successfully over this tournament so far with the Titans. And it was some support of Super Barbarians in there. Yeah, it's you were telling me that when they played against Synchronic, we noticed that Synchronic moved a lot of those air skeletons, or those skeleton traps, excuse me, to air mode. So maybe Tribe makes that same adjustment. And now there's less skeleton traps on the base. Remember, you can only have the trap in ground or air. There are multiple, so you can choose, pick and choose. But less ground skeletons can definitely be great. Although the Titans, with their aura, with that little bit of lightning there, is going to take down any skeletons. This is a very interesting approach. We see the MTFY changing it up a little bit. We hear the crowd starting to get into it, but he's starting to make his way to the middle of the space. And what's that so far looks really solid. All of those high hit point buildings in the core, they should not matter too much, but the Mojai Front Tower has locked onto the healers of that Archer Queen, which could be a big, big factor moving on because she did not take the wall break where he was trying her to get into the base. The Royal Champion already with her ability, but this means the tower is really far on the back end. But he has to have this Warden ability left. He has the Warden ability, he still has King ability, which should be able to open up some of these walls. Although the King gets distracted there on the Queen, he's fine, he comes back. Spiky Ball, Earthquake Boots, remember Earthquake Boots destroy those walls, but also deal out tons of damage. The Town Hall is approximately half health here. King's gonna go over and take a few whacks at it, and this is looking very good for Shawan. There are Ricochet Cannons, but he's still got plenty of force to work through here with the Queen. Super Barbarians now being deployed, and plenty of spell support. This looks to be another three-star for MTFY. They are just not stopping. They're not leaving the pressure down. They just keep continuing a three-star with those bases. The Queen has survived the entire attack. He is celebrating. He is happy with this attack. And it's another three-star, which was as well faster from Kronos, which can be important later on. One minute, 51 seconds means that he was faster by 17 seconds of Kronos attacks. It's going to bring it again. We have Nibrax first, who is known for his dragon type attacks, but he has Arrow, fireball zap attacks with the which were Lalo. But was he bluffing yesterday? And will he go back to the skies with those beastly dragons? No, it is going to be the zap giant arrow. Lalo, we saw Tribe make up tons of time yesterday. Giant arrow there, obviously, on the Queen. He's going to zap out and damage some of these buildings and send that giant arrow across the base. But remember, Itsu, we did see a miss on the giant arrow yesterday. But they were able to recover. Zaps out, gets the Rage Tower. Oh! I think that Mojai Tower was supposed to go down, and it did not. The oh, Rage no. Tower, yes, it did go down, but having a Mojai alive when you're playing a Lalo attack and remember the defenses in hard mode are dealing more damage this can be devastating it now all comes down to how well he can control his heroes to get the value maybe still he was looking for maybe a little bit on top to make sure that the Lalo can work but the opening so far is leaving a lot of question marks King does go to a building using that giant gauntlet and rage to get in there but the ice golems remain King did do a great job taking down the Monolith, which is a heavy damage dealing defense. The Battle Blimp does fly in with the Warden's Eternal Tome to protect the Balloons, protect that Battle Blimp, and now he needs to land and connect to take the Town Hall down. Rage should secure the Town Hall as those Headhunters scurry on through. Yetis through there. Let's see if the Yetis can get a little bit of damage, but you're right, Itsu. Those multi Infernos are going to deal so much damage, but also a scatter shot on the back that the Queen wasn't able to get. Yeah, and the Queen on his hero dive went down as well. The Royal Champion now trying her best. And remember, because the equipment is not maxed, those tests are not a one-shot anymore. And he has to work now with his Lalo and with that Mojang Front Tower alive. Imagine that Mojang Front Tower being gone. Now the Red oh, Bars no. are coming in as well. Loons are dropping down. And he still has the Mojang Tower on the back end. Every this, other hero is gone. This is not looking good, Itsu. This is not looking good for Nebax and Tribe. This could be the first defense of the war. A pivotal moment, a pivotal strike from Nebrax. We think the Giant Arrow may have missed just a little bit, ultimately costing him multi-Inferno will burn up these balloons, not to mention the multi-Archer Tower, which is sending arrows non-stop, targeting three loons at a time, along with that Warden, along with the Elf. MTIFFY with a huge surprise defense. And the get a shot on the far right side with that multi-Inferno Tower together are going to defend, but because we have all of the um, outside beings on the far left side without protection, it should be still a high percentage. So Tribe is 
not out whatsoever. We have seen a lot of defenses over the last couple of matches as we're going on. It does not just mean that the teams are becoming better on offense, but as well on the defensive side. And this is what we see here from the Chinese team with their base. And the opening just did not go in favor of Nibrox. The giant arrow is not easy to always control, especially if you're on stage and if your hands might be shaking a little bit. I think everyone has had that at home when the giant arrow. Yes. The queen, just this one tile. And the further the arrow has to go, the more distance of the actual target you will have. So it did not work out, but it's going to be a high percentage two-star for Tribe Gaming. And it doesn't even need to be a full tile. It's just a few degrees of yeah. difference there. Remember, MTFY did get a perfect war against Navi. However, they did not against Synchronic. So this is over their matches. And now it is back. It is back on the like in this. That's a very, very high fail. Cloud of Synchronic, what to use strategy-wise. What are they going to go in with? They were really, really versatile in their first matches, and they're back to the roots. They're going in with the Druids as well, having that support there to make sure that they can delay that Warden ability a little bit longer further inside the core of the base. It's, this makes me nervous, though, based on our last match with the Millicene MG. Two overgrowths can be so, so risky. This was considered a very safe strategy throughout a lot of our qualifiers. Whenever there was a mistake, a giant error from any team, you switch to that two overgrowth strategy and you adjust and you get those safe three stars. However, we've seen in this hard mode with the adjustments, the defense is dealing more damage, the hero's dealing less. This it could be a little bit tougher. We'll have to keep an eye on everything as they make their way through the town hall. King gets great value, opens up the base a little bit, but also gets the queen out. What are you seeing it, sir? I feel like he did not get as much value with the king he was looking for, because remember, that is about the pathing, right? The air defense staying alive for a couple of longer seconds, and this is now defenses where the roots are actually going towards, which is messing up the pathing. This strategy, this troop, it's all about the pathing, all of the, about the setup, and those Tesla and the Archer Queen were a big surprise there. So this could now cause, he has to readjust now with those Super Barbarians, which he might miss later on in the attack. Right, we usually see those Super Barbarians come in to clean up. He does do a great job cleaning up that pathing, but a couple of the Valkyries do stray aside. The Root Riders are going to open up that intersection so that there's access to the middle of the base. Raid Tower goes down, Warden Ability, and Cloud's hands are so laser focused right now. First Overgrowth that's in, and this is where we saw MMG getting in a lot of trouble. Do you decide to play that second overgrowth? But I feel he was late enough here. He can elect to use that second overgrowth in a very appropriate spot. The main thing right now, keep these troops alive and keep the push going. Yeah, he just used that queen ability. The healers are spawned, but there's a lot of black mines, so only one healer alive. The royal gem ability had been already used. Where is he going to use another overgrowth spell? And why did he bring it? That might be another question. He is now going to overgrowth the town hall yet again. And this is again the moment where the town hall is the last building. Whoa. He has no spells left. He has used everything. Just wait and watch. He will get that Eagle Artillery out. The Queen is taking damage from the Expo. Root Riders are fading here. He does have a little bit left. Valkyries are in there. Pekka's in there. Will he have enough to take the Town Hall down? He needs the Overgrowth to fade off. It does! The Root Riders are in there. The Pekka's are in there. The Town Hall should go down, but this is still very vulnerable to a defense. He does have that Apprentice Warden. Couple of Roots, couple of Valkyries. Does he have enough gas in the tank here, at two? Oh, the Town of Poison did a lot of damage. It's the Archer Tower, the Mortar, and the Wizard Tower, and they have a dream. There is Diggy, though. I think Diggy might be a game changer in this attack. The Pekka is stuck. Another Pekka on the outside, the Baker is trying her Diggy. best. Diggy really might be the MVP here. I think Diggy, I think you're right. I think Diggy just saved that Apprentice Warden long enough so that he could get it. It could still be a defense. Time is ticking away. 12 seconds, there's a Pekka stuck in the wall. If the Pekka gets through this wall, it will get that drill that Diggy's working on. Eight seconds, seven seconds, and Cloud <laughs> gets saved by the Apprentice Warden. MTFY remain perfect, wow. It bring, I don't know, something, but please, not another overgrowth. It is posed because I'm up here losing it, and so I'm so nervous for my hands are shaking. That three star in for his team because this match is really on a knife's edge. But they have to three star first, and they are going in, it seems like, with a fireball. That is the combination they're looking for. The giant arrow, which means they're going for the town hall. The earthquakes in first. The invisibility spells next. And there goes Whoa. the fireball at the town hall. The town hall. Beautiful. He's getting the job done. The town hall is gone. No mistakes on that giant arrow. He had a very beautiful anchor point on that. 
and with the workshop over there on the corner. So he was able to set that fire up, fireball up. And remember, he doesn't have to hit the Town Hall directly with the fireball. It has a little bit of radius, so he can use that to kind of anchor in there, let the Queen take the Town Hall down. Now we have a lot of uh, things going on at the top screen with the Battle Bolt, battle bolt flying in and taking down defense, accompanying that Queen. Look, the Queen's kind of sneaking in there while the Yetis are distracting and getting lots and lots of value. Yeah, and I wonder if he planned to have the Warden following his Queen, because there were no healers on that Warden. The Warden did not follow. So one of those rare cases where I feel like the Warden was supposed to go in with the rest of the troops, but there is the remaining troops with all of those minions. The Rocket Dunes are in, trying to overpower the back But queen. that defending Super Dragon is just really annoying for him right now. And the Royal Champion has to somehow live and fight back, but the oh. Headhunter is there! Oh no! That, but that, there's nothing to take out that Super Dragon into! It's going to blur down that last balloon. There's minions. There's only a few storages remaining, but that clan castle Whoa. is still in there. The Phoenix is going to hold everything up, but he has to get the clan castle. Does he have it? He has it! <laughs> wow! So close! Itsu, never a doubt, obviously, but that was so close to another fail. What an incredible pick to bring a Super Dragon on the defensive side up. This comeback potential for this match. But those two teams, they are going to fail with the Super Dragon just going around. And it's we talked a lot about Tribe's defenses, but huge props to... Rolling, because right now it is just incredible. Those two teams are giving us a show, and it's going to be another time the Electro Titans in this match. We have a really stacked race tower in that core of the base. There's something to look out for and how he's going to approach this. But he's going to try to send those Titans exactly in there to then overpower it with that Eternal Tome, with that Warden ability. Yeah, that's very, very key on this attack, especially when you look in the middle of this base. Look at that Rage Tower. It's covering the scatter shot. Two multi-infernos, the Eagle Artillery, the Battle Builder. That Rage can be absolutely devastating as he makes his way to the center of the base. This is very, very pivotal. If Yo-Yo can somehow force the defense, jumping to the Town Hall, Xion is trying to get this base down. And if he does, it is going to be even more dire for Tribe in this war. And he still has nearly all of those hero abilities. There goes the Barbarian King. The Town Hall oh, nice. is going down before the Invis Tower can even trigger. The Royal Champion has been used as well to overpower this top this side compartment. And this is, as you said, I feel like completely crushed. This strategy is just overpowering those bases. The Royal Champion supporting the remaining troops. But there is no defenses left. Yeah, there's nothing to take. He's still got a full army out there. And so he has more than I start with on my attack. Xi'an comes in with a beautifully executed Electro Titan attack. And this is why I like this MTFY squad. They are ve well versed on offense. It feels they can use any attack strategy, but more impressive has to perform. It doesn't even matter anymore what Tribe does. But to keep up the pressure to force those mistakes, Tribe has to perform with their... Yesterday, I don't think Tribe is worried about Rikiris in this four spot. He is very, very solid. One of the most consistent attackers in all of class. God needs you now, Rikiris. What do you have in store for us? Final preparations. He's in on the base, and it is going to be just that. It's you. You called it. A Lalo. Three skeleton spells in there as well for support for the heroes. He does have some sneaky goblins going in, thinning out those storages up top. Remember, sneaky goblins only attack resource buildings until they're all destroyed. King now going to join the party, and Rakiris is setting up this Lalo to sort through the skies. And a really nice loom to actually not only take down the Tesla, but as well trigger the Poison Tower. But with those Rocket Loons and those Headhunters, this King is going to be under a lot of fire. With the Queen, with her equipments getting used early on, there is a lot of potential for her to take down a lot of buildings. But he has to get further inside the space to really create this pathing. He did a really great job with it there with the Earthquake Spiky Ball from the King, was able to open up that compartment to the Monolith, now using those Skeleton Spells for a lung to go ahead and distract the Monolith. Meanwhile, the Battle Bump is flying in for the Town Hall. Warden's ability to protect but some balloons as he flies in here. And remember, they always like to hold just a few balloons to finish off the back end of the base. World Champion up top, and this is looking really, really nice for Rikiris. And he has like a split Lalo right now. He has a few balloons on the far right side, while as well a Lalo on the left side. And with the remaining spells, he should make sure that he is pushing through, getting another three-star in, and take a look as well at the time. This base just got smashed. That's what Rikiris did yesterday as well. We usually think Lalo's a lot faster, especially with the hero dive setups that he's been doing. But Rikiris has been so consistent, so strong, so fast throughout. It's about a minute, 24, 25 seconds as this last storage falls down, and Tribe Gaming are still alive after that three-star. They did this day. 
Shu Ai was the final attacker in the two wars on day number one. Things up, and as well, he will, might, go again. The tribe crowd goes crazy. They need a defense. But Shu Ai can qualify MTFY for a grand final with this final attack. It is a Queen Charge Lalo, one of the strongest attacks in Clash of Clans history. When executed properly, this can take down any base in the game, Mitsu. But everything is coming down to the execution of that attack. And you hear the tribe crowd really cheering for a crazy. defense because that's the only chance for a tribe gaming to make it to the final. Because remember, this is a single elimination bracket from this point on, which means whoever is going to lose this is dropping out of the competition. An early rage is getting forced, and the single fur tower, he has to manage that nicely, is locking onto the Archer Queen, so better be careful. He did have the Expo and the multi Archer Tower locked onto that Queen, but not only do they need a defense, it has to be lower than 95%. If he fails and it's 96%, MTFY still win and still move on to our Grand Final. Watch the single target Inferno, he needs to keep this Queen alive, elects not to freeze it as it's on a little I don't know what was down there, but it was on something else. So the Queen's able to power through. The Queen is surging through here, and Itsu, it's all on the line right now. Flame Flinger's throwing shots on the left. Flame Flinger already getting a lot of value, picking the, picking the side where the Royal Gem is located because she has a little bit of a smaller range. But now we have... Oh, he did not pay attention, which means the Flame Flinger is opening up. That Queen is locked into the Clan Castle, but now it's all about the timing with that Invisibility Tower. That could mess up things quite badly for him. Did not maybe get enough value, but he did take down the Royal Champion there with that Flame Flanger, so that was really, really nice. But the main thing is that Scattershot Poison Tower did stand, and as he makes his way to the back end of that base, it's going to be very, very tough to take down into. Ooh, the Invis Tower is triggering. The Queen is running behind the tunnel. There is the Invis. He missed those healers. The Queen still has to get the tunnel. The Clank House is the next building, but those Queens and those Clothes, he's freezing. Oh! He's raging. The tunnel is oh! not going down. Tribe was looking for defeat in Shuai's face, and it's going to be a one star defense. And Tribe looks to move on to our grand final. What an incredible finish! The town hall, the invisibility spell, he did not pay attention to that. He was concentrating on the Lalo. The Lalo did not get the value, and this has not only cost him this attack, this might have cost him the match. The Final appearance, everything. The, I, I think this did cut into. I don't think there's any question. Tribe now only need two more stars to win this war. It is a low percentage, 81%. The invisibility tower. You oh, wow. What a turn of events. I thought Shuai was feeling really good. It looked really good until then. Yes, they don't need that three star, but can step up and yes and he has to make sure that this attack is as safe as possible yes they don't need that and he is one of the only players out there who has the option of becoming twice the world champion and this would be something first ever in the clash history can he deliver now in this attack he's going in with the lightnings with the earthquake and as well with the giant arrow, something which we have seen already earlier today. There goes the lightnings, and he's taking down that inferno tower he was aiming for. Damaging already that defending Archer Queen. The King is diving into this bottom apartment, trying to take damage away off that Archer Queen. But those Tesla are delaying the Queen quite a bit, and there are so many skeleton traps. He did a great job there with one Valkyrie to take out some of those skeletons so the Queen can focus. Keep an eye on this Ricochet Cannon, and it does take down the Unicorn. King Spiky Ball goes off. He's going to circle back, take down the Archer Queen. This charge is looking great. The Giant Arrow was beautiful. Now we have Super Minions outside of the Clank Castle. We do see a huge variety of defensive units here for MT. But Yo-Yo needs a two-star 86% to secure the victory. And we have seen it earlier, the defending Clan Castle troops, if you don't manage to take them out, they can be a really big problem later on. The Super Minions, they have survived. So if you don't have a plan for them, circles back. that would be really bad. But the Queen, as you said, is circling back. So he might be able to take them out. That would be Tom massive Hall. for him. 
Town Hall falls, that's the second star. Now he just needs a few more buildings into and Tribe Gaming look for the improbable comeback. It looks so dire for Tribe, but this crowd went insane when MTFY missed. There's so many buildings up top. If he gets the Evil Artillery, there's going to be nothing to stop this from becoming the victory that Tribe needs. Balloons are surging, you hear the crowd ramping up, and the crowd's going to go crazy as Tribe Gaming will be our second grand finalist at Superfest 2024. The Red Mine still took down the balloon, so the three star is off the table, but they did not need it. They played it as safe as possible with the approach. The balloon for the tunnel is such a safe approach in general for those Lalo attacks. And with the Warden Eternal Tome ability, the tunnel is nearly always going down. The Super Minions were a little bit of a problem, but in the end, I think they're completely happy with this attack. He would not care whatsoever if this would be a three star or not, because it means they're going to the finals. Yes, great adjustment, great game plan. Lalo, even if he doesn't get the three star, it's always going to be a high percentage attack. And the crowd is going insane in here as we have our second grand finalist. We heard Synchronic talking about it. They wanted a German final and they get just that. That's right. They wanted to have Tribe Gaming in the finals. They wanted to the three stars. Clouds was a little bit close. Let's be honest. Apprentice Warden saved it. But after Nebrex has failed, Tribe was just staying in the game. They did a great job not giving up. As you mentioned, three star after three star. And finally, the defense gave way and they were able to come back and get that victory. And that's what I feel like for a Tribe in that position. They have to try to see as well the best because um, they're now going to the finals. And Synchronic looked incredible. So 